One of the great features in version 5 of Mio Console is the monitor control that lets us select our monitoring source, our monitor outputs, and change the level of the audio as we're listening. What I'm going to do is show you how I use a Shuttle Express, a little controller made by Contour, that is a USB device that sends out key commands and is a media controller. I'm going to show you how to map that over to the Mio console monitor control so that you have a physical controller to use in your space. So the first thing that I needed to do was take a look at the key commands within the Mio console and see what my options are. So we've got a lot of control here. What I want to do is I want physical control of my dim and mute as well as the volume obviously. I want to be able to make the monitor controller visible and invisible depending on how much screen real estate I have. And I also want to be able to switch between two sources so that I can A, B my original unaffected audio versus audio that has been modified through the 2D software. So after taking note of what the various function keystrokes are for up, down, dim, mute, visibility, and my source switching, the next thing I had to do is quit the console. And the reason why is if the console is open, you won't be able to map those keystrokes into the shuttle software. So now let's go to shuttle settings. Now again, this is just my preference. I run in what's called the global mode so that no matter what application is in the forefront, these keystrokes are always going to my Mio. Now what you have to do is any program that you would be using while you're running audio, you have to delete its settings, otherwise it'll kind of hijack them from the Mio. So for example, let's look at something I could be using. Oh, here's GarageBand. So if you want to use GarageBand but not have the shuttle get hijacked when you're in GarageBand, you would select this application setting and then go to remove settings and confirm that and now the shuttle will not even take note of GarageBand if it's open which is the way that I prefer to work you could go in for example let's say you use Logic and you want to be able to use these buttons that the controller has for different functions in Logic and you only want to do volume with the center wheel you can do that by mapping the keystrokes across so next we actually have to start assigning some keystrokes. So I just hit button one, which is this button, and you can see I have said I want it to type the keystroke for command option control D, which is the dim in the monitor controller. And as you can see, I have different buttons doing the different functions that I want in my monitor controller. Next, I'm going to actually do the volume changes. So in the center jog wheel, if I turn that right, it sends command option control up, which is my monitor control up command once only. That equates to a half dB step in the monitor controller. And I've done the same thing for down. So now by using this center wheel, I have a very sensitive monitor volume control. One of the features that I like about the Shuttle Express is that on the outer shuttle we have these different zones. So you have seven steps of sensitivity for each one of the directions there. So what I've done is, let's look at, if I turn shuttle wheel just a little bit into zone one that sends my monitor control up keystroke twice per second. If I turn it to zone two, that's three times per second. Three is four times per second, and on as you turn it all the way up to zone seven, which is then 30 times per second. And I do the same thing as I turn the shuttle wheel down I just send the volume down command up to 30 times per second. So now I have my five buttons mapped, I have my inner jog wheel mapped, and my outer shuttle mapped. So I can close this, 
and let's relaunch the Mio console. So here we are, and I've got a little session set up. So I've got audio coming in on DAW 1 and 2, which is being sent to the master bus and this mixed bus that has a Mio strip with a really aggressive compressor on it. So we'll be able to see that. And here you can see I have my two sources which have been assigned from those buses. And I can either send to my headphones on the cans or what I've done is created this speakers output which will actually show up here on analog one and two so that we can see what's happening with the audio. So let me go over to iTunes and you can see that I am now running audio and I'm in the iTunes application but because I've deleted the iTunes settings from the shuttle software iTunes will not respond to the shuttle at all so I can show you here I'm going to turn the jog wheel and as you can see here on the monitor controller as I'm turning that and it's a detented wheel that gives me a nice little click feeling my monitor level is changing half a DB per increment very nice if you're working within a calibrated monitoring environment or by turning the outer wheel I'm turning it just a little bit it's moving pretty slowly and now as I turn it farther it's moving faster and you can see on analog one and two at this point I pretty much have no audio and I'll turn that back up I'll just turn that full tilt and that'll ramp up for me so there's my volume controls now I'm listening to the master source currently which has no effect on it and when I hit the button and I go to my mixed source you can see the output levels on analog 1 and 2 go down because I am slamming that with a lot of compression right here. So I've done that just to be kind of exaggerated so you can see it easily but in a listening environment you could be making very small EQ changes or using a limiter whatever your chain is and be able to quickly physically AB between your two sources between my mix and the master which again you can see that jump up and now that that's there if I hit button one the dim kicks in monitor controller you can see here is at minus 20 and there it's at zero if I hit the mute my audio goes away and finally if I was working let's say in logic or you know, sound blade whatever your your DAW is if you're out of space I can hit this button and the monitor control goes away but even though it's not visible it's still functional so if you look at my analog one and two levels I'll kick in the dim it's still passing audio but dimmed here's mute and even my source switching here I just switched over to my compressed channel still works so now I could be in another program entirely and still have physical control of the console which is great if you're working on a laptop or on a smaller screen and don't have enough real estate to have the monitor controller up full time and of course I can also switch that to the smaller view and as you can see all of my functions still work just in a smaller form so that's how I use the Shuttle Express with the version 5 monitor control as I said you could use a PowerMate or any other media controller that will allow you to map its events over to key commands that you just map the same as the monitor controller within the Mio so I hope you find this useful and I hope you can get up and running with uh, a nice little hardware controller for the great sounding and functional monitor control in version 5.